Welcome to uh, this uh, meeting of the class on traditional Buddhist chanting. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the Th Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra. Um, it's the first of two classes on um, that chant. And so, uh, as usual, we'll start the chant by, we'll start the class by doing the chant. Now, 
So I'm going to leave this here because I might want to bring this video back up again in the course of our discussion. But let me now bring up some, some slides. Oops, let me get the right slide. All right, now, um, one of the things that uh, I want to do in this class is uh, go over the different pieces that are all put together uh, in the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra. So what is the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra? That's a, that's a question uh, right off the bat. I've alluded to this before um, in talking about the... Um, uh, The Great Durrani, um, because uh, the Thousand Ants and I Sutra is intimately uh, interrelated with the Great Durrani. Um, let's see, did I not do it? Let's see. Universal obeisance mantra. What is that? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. I think that was a little bit better. Let's see now. Oh, but it looks even better if we get to the right slide. Okay. So now these are some of the parts that make up uh, the uh, Great Durrani. At the very beginning, the opening part um, is. Nobody's really sure about this mantra at the beginning, the Om Bada Mil, um, which actually sometimes is written as Om Bada Mik. Um, but uh, then there's then there's the um, the famous mantra for purifying speech, the Sudi Sudi Maha Sudi Su Sudi Sabaha, uh, which gets a lot of uh, usage. Um, the Sutra opening verse. Um, the mantra for opening the Dharma treasury, the great Durrani itself, which is, um, uh, I wouldn't say it's right in the middle of the um, uh, great, uh, of the of the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra, but it's kind of in the middle. Um, and one of the things I'm going to be focusing a lot on uh, tonight is the stuff that actually comes after the great Durrani. So the um, part after the Great Durrani is is kind of like a little repentance ceremony, uh, combined with a um, or followed by a uh, uh, an invocation of a Junjie Bo song, uh, uh, oh yeah, and then ending with um, the four great vows and uh, taking refuge in the eternally abiding three jewels of the ten directions. Um, and so I've got some placeholder. Oh no, this is a good. This is a good slide. So this is a. This slide shows. What does it show? It's from a really interesting book, an essential compendium for Buddhists, a modern Buddhist liturgy, Bulja Pilam. This was actually compiled back in the early twentieth century, in the nineteen hundreds, uh, uh, not quite a hundred years ago. Um, and uh, uh, it's actually um, it's one of a, uh, two or or more uh, uh, references that are used by uh, modern Korean Buddhists for what their practices are. Um, this has basically well, I wouldn't say everything, but has a lot 
uh, of their practices. And this is from this this um, is taken from the index of that book. Here's a direct link to it. You can you can download the whole book um, from the uh, uh, Choge Order of Korean Buddhism. Um, they they put the whole thing up, up online as a PDF. Um, and and this this edition of this particular book is in English. One of the big things about the Bulja Pilam, um, when it was first published in Korean, uh, was that it was written out in both. Um, well, most of it was written in the in the Hangul Korean script, um, uh, as opposed to writing things out in Chinese characters. Um, a lot there's a lot of Chinese characters in it. So you can, especially when it comes to things like the titles of mantras. So this is from the index of that book, just one part of the section of the index on different mantras. So these are uh, the mantra for causing offerings to arise, the mantra expressing the subtle mystery of the fundamental mind of Kwanzaa, the magnificently bright six syllable king of mantras. So this is the title of the Omani Panmi Hum <laughs> mantra. The title is longer than the mantra. Um, the mantra for extinguishing evil rebirths, the mantra for feeding the ghosts, the mantra for attaining the highest rebirth in Sukhavati, etc., etc., brushing teeth. Um, uh, there's all kinds of, of, of mantras, and this is just to give you an idea of the, um, you know, the 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 repertoire of of mantras that are available um, in not just in, in Korean Buddhism but in East Asian Buddhism in general and so I'm skipping I've got some placeholder slides in here okay so this is this is where we get to in the chant after having done the great Durrani um, now if you noticed I in fact I wrote it down uh, in the chant that in the recording that we uh, played at the beginning of the class the great Durrani starts at about five minutes and 16, five minutes and 16 seconds into the chant, and then goes for almost three minutes, um, ends at about 8.06. And then you get to this part right here. And actually, I'm going to uh, end the slideshow for now and bring up the um, recording and see if I can get it on this part of the chant. How else can I? Let's see. Yeah, here we go. I'll go ahead of that. Now, let's try it again. Oh, I killed my... Uh, uh, this is a video oh. about uh, <laughs> it's a Medicine Buddha Sutra. Okay, this is a, something... My, is my, my VLC Kurt player Steinitz, is going crazy um, now. Also known as Chung Sado. And... Um, Wait just a second. Let what me, is uh, happening? Share my screen here. It's playing a. All right. So my uh, I use VLC video player um, for playing back things that I have recorded um, like that. Let's see if I can get that to work better this time. For some reason, it didn't like when I was trying to. Okay. And one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to slow down the playback just a little bit. And this is the very end. This is the very end of the Great Durrani part of the Thousand Hands and I Sutra. Okay, so that's where we're at. Il se dong bang gil todiang, i se nam bang duk chodiang, sam se so bang gu jong to, sa se buk bang yong an gang. Okay, so that's where <clears throat> uh, we've gotten to. Or that's where the, um, the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra picks up uh, after the um, uh, Great Durrani part. Is done. Oh, and just one other thing. Well, I'll probably mention this again uh, in the um, in this and then in the next class. And I know I've mentioned it before. When you do this practice of chanting the um, Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra, um, uh, often the 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 um, the point or the, the main attraction in the in the chant is the Great Durrani itself which only takes up less than three minutes 
of a chant that takes about what was it maybe 17 minutes to do um so less than a fifth of the um whole chant but you can do the great Durrani over and over again within this chant. And that's actually often how it's done. Um, okay. <clears throat> so what's happening now is that as soon as the great Durrani part is over, the, um, the chant switches into a new section, which is, uh, I mean, I refer to it, and it's not just me. I mean, this is how it's generally referred to as the repentance part of the chant. And this is kind of setting up the repentance part of the chant. Um, these, these, these four lines right here, il se dong bang gil toriang. Each, each line starts with a number. Um, these are uh, Chinese numbers. Um, and in a, a Korean speaking person would also recognize these numbers uh, when they're spoken il, i, sam, sa. Uh, Koreans have two different numbering systems. One of them is based upon the Chinese numbered system. And the other is um, <clears throat> the native uh, Korean numbering system. Um, uh, se means uh, to cleanse, okay? And so first cleanse, second cleanse, third cleanse, fourth cleanse. What's being cleansed are the four directions, the uh, eastern direction, the southern direction, the western direction, and the northern direction. So that's Dong, Nam, So, and uh, Book are the, is, is east, south, west, and north. Um, and then it for, and then Bang is the direction always. And then <clears throat> the, uh, the last three characters in each of these lines, last three syllables in each of these lines is something pertaining to um, the result of cleansing that direction. Um, and and the, the um, first cleanse east direction clean place of enlightenment. Now this is one of the places where there is something kind of a uh, uh, special. Uh, this these two characters, the to to or do riang do riang, is um, a way of referring to the place where a Buddha attains enlightenment, which is sometimes called the bodhimanda or the bodhimandala. Um, or <laughs> in different um, uh, different translators have, have kind of sometimes called the pavilion of enlightenment, uh, which is kind of strange. But it's it's this it's also often referred to as the the seat of enlightenment. It is the place where a Buddha is seated in meditation. Uh, in the case of Shakyamuni Buddha, under the Bodhi tree, <clears throat> uh, at the moment when they attain their final awakening. Uh, as a fully awakened Buddha. Um, and so this is what is being uh, cleaned primarily. Uh, and then uh, second cleans the south direction, uh, second cleansed south direction attain pure coolness. Now this is uh, so this is a uh, actually um, Atik Nhat Han has some very nice, uh, choices of words and, and a lot of times he's he's translating some interesting Buddhist concepts uh, he often refers to um, uh, the Buddha's realization of the the middle way which is not his final enlightenment but what it, it was what led to his final enlightenment and he uh, 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 describes this especially in, in Thich Nhat Hanh's book um, Old Path White Clouds uh, which is his book about the life of the Buddha um, he refers to the fact that um, uh, uh, the Buddha's great realization, which led him to the to the middle way, um, was that meditation could, could be pleasant, <laughs> and uh, the pleasantness, uh, the way that the Buddha described um, the pleasantness of, of meditation was as a cool breeze. Which, if you've ever, I, I suppose, if you've ever meditated in India, <laughs> um, a cool breeze is probably a very pleasant thing to experience while you're meditating. Um, so uh, third, cleanse the west direction, all pure lands. So that's also kind of cool. All the pure lands are being purified. Um, fourth, cleanse north direction, eternal peace, healthy. Um, so <clears throat> I've got a, a, a more, a, a more uh, coherent English translation that I'm going to show. It's not my translation. It, it's uh, I'm not sure who did it, but anyway. But then after after um, cleansing the four directions, um, 
The place of enlightenment is completely pure. Um, the three jewels, the gods and the dragons descend to the earth. I now recite the wonderful true words, uh, vow, bestow, compassion, mercy, secret, divine protection. Um, so this is all, this is, this is kind of the preamble um, to the repentance part of the chant. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, okay. So before I go any further, I do want to say that this is um, a, a very important link. Um, this will take you to one of many. There are actually a, a, a large number of meditation groups around the world that have their chanting books available online for anybody to use, um, you know, to encourage the practice of chanting, which is very good. Uh, this particular one, which is uh, put out by the uh, Kansas Zen Center, um, uh, has uh, something, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll probably show this later on, but in the chant, Stanley Lombardo has uh, provided a word for word uh, translation. Now there are like, a, so, and that's, I haven't used his translations exactly, but this is the kind of thing that you'll see uh, in his word for word translations. So this, this, this is going character by character, syllable by syllable in the original uh, Chinese. So the, the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra chant is in Chinese. Um, just so you know. Um, first, cleanse, east, direction, clean, place of enlightenment. Okay. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that you'll see. It, and it, uh, it can be actually quite useful. It can also be very obscure, um, but it gives you a sense when you when you see a more uh, polished English translation um, that's you know with with nouns and verbs in the right places and complete sentences and all that. Uh, you, 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 it's not that always that easy to see exactly where that came came from in the original Chinese, and sometimes it's not what the actual Chinese says. It's what the translator thinks is easier to understand or easier to translate in some cases. Um, but in any case, um, this is a really great resource um, uh, with Stanley, Stanley Lombardo's and Master Stanley Lombardo's uh, word for word um, uh, translation. And this is another really great resource. This is a chanting practice book um, uh, put out by some Korean Buddhists. I'm, so it's in Korean. Uh, I read, I, my Korean is very, 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 very rudimentary. It's getting better. I'm starting my second 10 week uh, online Korean class in two days. Um, but this is a Google Play book that you can download, and it's called Ki Do Bop, which in uh, Korean means uh, chanting practice, um, more or less. Uh, and this is just a screen. I, mean, I want to kind of zoom in on this, and then we're probably going to take a break in a minute. Um, this is just to give you an idea of what you get. So this is this is from the first page of that book on the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra. It gives the entire title of the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra uh, as it's sounded out in Hangul and the and the whole title in uh, uh, Chinese characters. And then every uh, syllable uh, of the chant is spelled out in Hangul and the corresponding um, a hanja or Chinese character is given as well, except for when you come to the mantras. So in, in, in Chinese Buddhism, as a general rule, the mantras are just spelled out in Hangul, although well, sometimes they get fancy and spell them out in Siddham. Um, Korean Buddhists rarely have ever used the hanja to spell out, or that is the Chinese characters to spell out uh, a mantra. Um, and okay, which is a little unfortunate because you, you miss something if you don't have that. Um, but <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to do a, a five minute break now. Um, and then we'll come back and uh, delve further into um, this repentance section of the, um, of the ten, uh, a Thousand Ants and I Sutra and hopefully get into the Junjay Bosal section as well. Um,
up back now. Uh, Oh, yeah. So let me um, actually, since I have this here, let me click on this link and show you what you get. I want to give credit where that is due. Here we go. This is a very nice PDF that shows up when you click on that link. You don't even have to download it. You can just read it. Uh, in your browser, uh, and uh, which is what I'm, I'm demonstrating right here. And so um, not just in the uh, Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra, which I will have. Oh, yeah. And, so, and here's a little, um, oh, let me make this bigger for this part. Note to this uh, section, um, learning the meanings as a chanting practice is perceiving sound, quant um, as perceiving sound can be deepened by learning the meaning of the chants word by word. In this edition, the literal meaning of each Sino-Korean word is given as an aid to understanding the meaning and experiencing the chant directly. Fluent translations can be found in the back of the book. The numerous Sanskrit mantras, including the Great Durrani, are efficacious sounds that have no lexical meaning. This is this statement is not true, um, actually. <laughs> as I think I've, you know, it's it, it anyway, whatever. And are therefore not translated. <laughs> the, yeah, grateful acknowledgement to everyone who the the very first line of the uh, I mean the the title of the Great Durrani it has meaning. It means the the um, um uh, the uh, Great Durrani of mystical and divine phrases. The very first line of the actual the, in the body of the Great Durrani says we take homage in the three jewels. Um, there's lots of references that, that can be translated, that, that can be recognized as Sanskrit words uh, that can be translated. And uh, more, more work needs to be done in order to um, come up with a, a good translation of the full Great Durrani as it's done in the um, uh, Korean version. Um, but there are full translations of the Great Durrani uh, in the, uh, the Chinese and Japanese versions and the Vietnamese versions, which is what other people, non-Koreans use anyway. But um, oh, that's not really the main point. Here it is. Here we go. Look at the morning bell chant. See, this is this one cha jung sang pyong pop ke choi wang shu ge myong sang do we go pado sang. If you know that morning bell chant, sorry for my sing the song um, chanting, but vow this bell sound fills Dharma world, iron wall, dark. Full, fully all bright three days ease pain shatter sword mountain. Um, <clears throat> it's just to give you an idea of um, well, but then also we're told that in the back of the book there are you know uh, English translations where you know the of the nouns and the verbs are put in the right order and more or less complete sentences. Uh, our vow may the sound of this bell spread throughout the universe, make all the hell of dark metal bright, et cetera, et cetera. Um, shatter the hell of swords. It doesn't say sword mountain. Um, you know, so it, it, it's actually very good to look at these um, translations, to look at um, Stan and Lombardo's word by word um, uh, uh, translation of the Sino-Korean characters. Um, but I'm, you know, trying to, kind of make that one step better because if you um um if you especially for the for the thousand hands and eyes sutra you really need to have the um the 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 chinese characters and look at the meaning of the characters and also to know the history of where these things come from because these are not just um this is not something that was just written from scratch um anyway okay so this is all right, so I showed the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight lines, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight lines of seven syllables each. This is a typical Chinese poetry. 
Um, there's lots of different uh, meters for Chinese poetry. Um, then there's an additional one, two, three, four, five, six. There's one, two, three, four more lines um, that, that finish up this section. Uh, and here is a, uh, oh yeah, and, and so, and by the time, um, by the time you get to this uh, section, uh, it starts to become more clear that this is the uh, repentance section of the chant. Um, and this English translation here, this is, this is from um, either from the Kansas Zen Center, or there's lots of other places um, that have these translations available in their, in their um, local group's chanting book that they put online. Uh, first, a Bodhi Mandala has been established by wiping away delusions in the East. Uh, second, Bodhi Mandala, this is the seat of where Buddha attains enlightenment. Second, coolness has been attained by wiping away distress in the South. Third, an Elysium has been attained by wiping away desires in the West. Fourth, everlasting tranquility has been attained by wiping away lewdness in the North. And then there's a chant praising the Bodhi Mandala. That's, that's actually um, this part here. So what I just read is the kind of the English uh, fixed up uh, English translation of these four lines. And the next four lines come in this chant praising the Bodhi Mandala. Now that every part of the Bodhi, Bodhi Mandala is free of dust, the three treasures, tr three treasures and the dragon of the sky come down. See, in this... The, 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 Right here. This does not say the dragons of the sky. This says these are the or wait a minute. This is uh, three the three jewels, and this is the gods. Okay, and this is these are the dragons. And this is a very standard um, phrase from um, many Buddhist sutras, where this is a shorthand for the eight types of celestial beings. Uh, usually, often only the the uh, gods and the dragons are mentioned. Um, since I now possess and const and this is the part here, since I now possess and constantly repeat the mantra, I will be protected by great compassion. I now repent from the bottom of my heart of the sins, whether large or small, which I have committed since time immemorial and which were created by the desires and committed by the body, mouth, and will. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> pretty lousy translation, actually. But, you know, but still, it, it, you, you have to have something. It's not that bad. It's pretty bad. Okay. And then, okay. So after that, that's kind of the setup. Then the next thing that happens in the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra is that we call upon these 12 Buddhas um, to witness our repentance. We haven't repented yet in the chant. We've, we've kind of begun to repent. Uh, actually, here, up here, even though, um, yeah. I formally created various evil karma, all from no beginning, greed, hatred, ignorance, from body, speech, and mind, they arise, and I now completely repent. Um, this doesn't really come through very well in this particular uh, translation. Uh, I now repent. No, okay, it doesn't say that. Okay, all right. But now I'm calling upon these uh, Buddhas, and I'm going to, these are 12 Buddhas, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Actually, in the translation, it says that they're bodhisattvas, um, which, you know, who's counting? You know, Buddhas, bodhisattvas, whatever. Um, but they're actually Buddhas, each one of whom is a Buddha. This is the character for Buddha right here. And this is the way the character for Buddha is pronounced in Korean, bull. And Namu Chamche, Okchang, Bosung Changbol, Bogon Wang, Wayun Jobu, Ilche, Hyangwa, Jaje, Rokwangbol, Bego Kanasa, Gilchungbol, Jin Wi Dokbol, Gumgang, Yonggang, Sobo Kesambul, Bogon Walchung, Yom, Jongwangbul, Hwani Jang, Mani Bojukbul, Mujin Yang, Sung Wangbul, Saja Wobu, Hwani Jang, Ju Wangbul, Jebo Dang, Mani Sung Wangbul. Those are the 12 Buddhas. Um, and <clears throat> uh, so you can look at the translations of the names. Um, it, and it, there's, there's actually some interesting, this isn't just kind of a random collection of 12 Buddhas. Um, I probably won't have time to talk about that tonight. I might be able to talk about it in two weeks in the in the next and final class on the Thousand Hands and Eye Sutra. Let's see. And so uh, having called upon these 12 Buddhas to be witness to our repentance, uh, then uh, comes the, the 10 repentances. Um, and what are we repenting of? Um, 
These are the 10 uh, great misdeeds. This is an interesting list. Um, basically, it takes the, um, uh, the five precepts, adds the three poisons, and then, um, let's see, so it's uh, five, killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, okay? And then there's um, uh, so killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, uh, lying, and, oh, intoxicants, right? Okay, so, um, and actually, so intoxicants aren't explicitly in here. Um, so it's kind of interesting list of, these are the 10, uh, and basically these, these cover all the bases, especially since the last three are greed, hatred, and ignorance. Um, and what we're saying, what one says when one's doing this chant uh, is that we've done all these things over and over again throughout countless lifetimes in the past, and we repent. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, actually, this, this, this is kind of, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to move on. Making true repentance, okay. Uh, now, so far, especially this section of the chant might strike people as not being particularly Zen right? All this kind of repenting, all these bad things, uh, all this um, cleansing, you know, um, it's, can, people, people might look at it and say, oh, this sounds very dualistic. Well, so then there's, there's a disclaimer here now, basically. Um, uh, hundreds of kalpas accumulate evil, one thought instantly eliminate. So all of the um, uh, Evil. This is the character for evil. This is um, big gop. This is the character for gop. This is kalpa. This isn't like the short form for kalpa. Um, uh, uh, chuck chip. Uh, chuck chip. This is accumulating, and this is evil. Um, hundreds of kalpas accumulating evil. One thought ill yum. Uh, Dong Tang Jin instantly eliminate. So this is starting to be more Zen. You know, how do we how do we get rid of um, uh, uh, evil karma um, that we're repenting of? One, in one thought, it's instantly eliminated. As fire burns dry grass completely without any remainder. This is a nice line. Um, evil without. This is a very complicated uh, 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 line. Evil without self-nature arises with thought and is thought extinguished when evil also dead. So basically, um, this is kind of like, you know, dependent origination. Um, uh, <clears throat> all of this evil has no self-nature. It arises along with thought. And as thought is extinguished, um, this is the character for die. Okay, the evil also dies. <laughs> As thought is extinguished, when, actually this is when, the character for when, um, the evil also dies. Uh, evil dead, thought extinguished, both together void. This is thus called making true repentance. And so when you realize that um, uh evil karma uh, and thoughts and the extinguishing of evil karma and thoughts are all void. Uh, this is then when you realize that when the evil karma and all of your thoughts and the extinguishing of evil karma and the extinguishing of thoughts, when that is all seen as being void, uh, then this is called the true repentance. So now, now it sounds nice and Zen, right? Nice and non-dualistic. Okay, and then uh, then we recite the um, the oh good I, I embedded a let's see if this works. Um, 
This is uh And so that is a large group of Korean Buddhists led by um, Korean Buddhist monks chanting the repentance mantra, Om Sabha Mocha Moji Sadaya Sabaha. Um, there, and you can find YouTube videos of people chanting the repentance mantra for hours. Um, this, is, this particular video is put up on YouTube by the Korean Buddhist Television Network official channel. And there's a there's a link to the channels uh, to the to the Korean Buddhist Television Network's YouTube channel right there, and this is uh, an embedded um, uh, video that they put up on there. All right. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> oh, I should make this bigger, but it's not. Okay. Now, once the uh, repentance mantra is recited uh, and so if you do if you're doing the thousand hands and I, and I sutra uh, on your own as a practice you can and this is what I often try to do uh, if, if I have time and energy um, stop at this point and and recite the repentance mantra at, at least 108 times um, <clears throat> I don't know I feel like I have more, that's, <laughs> I could probably, should probably do it more than that, but I feel like 108 is at least demonstrating some, some effort. Oh, so another thing, and I mentioned this before, I'm going to say it again. Uh, when you're doing the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra uh, on your own, or, and also this can also be done with a group, as long as everybody agrees on, on this is what we're doing. Um, so you can then uh, chant the Great Dharani uh, at least three times, maybe six times. I've been trying to do it like 21 times. Um, I think 21 is a nice round number. Um, I recently uh, read a, uh, an autobiography of a great uh, Chinese Zen master, uh, Sheng Yen. Um, and uh, he once did a, a, a six year retreat, six years. And every day he would, a part of his practice every day, he did a lot of bowing a lot of bowing. I forget how many, if he, I don't think he really said how many bows he did every day, but mm -hmm. probably at least a thousand bows a day, uh, if not more. Um, <clears throat> and he chanted the great Durrani 21 times every day. Now I think he did. So I think he did it as part of, uh, the, 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 um, thousand hands and eyes sutra is not part of the Chinese Buddhist tradition, which is what Sheng Yan is a Chinese, uh, a Zen master. Um, but in the Chinese Buddhist tradition, uh, they do the, um, they have various, what they just call repentance rituals. The Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra is not usually itself referred to as a repentance ritual, but it has like an, a repentance ritual in it. Um, anyway, so it, there's usually some sort of a, a ritual framework, um, a container uh, for doing the Thousand Hands, for doing the Great Durrani, if you're going to do it multiple times, or, you know, you could just sit down and, and do the, the great Durrani uh, three, six, 21 times if, if you want. But I would suggest doing it with inside of the um, Thousand Hands and I Sutra. Now, this is the part I haven't had a chance to go over quite as much. And one of the ways that you can tell that it still needs a lot of work is that it's not very well formatted. But another way that you can tell in particular, look, it, this is a good thing to see right here. Uh, see? Well, I can't use the laser pointer and the mic and the and the uh, you know the zoom at the same time. It's kind of a pain. Um, but this is Bo Sal. This Sal here. This is simplified Chinese characters. So um, another. Oh, I can. I think I can probably show this. This is another. Um, a resource that I should that I should um, give a shout out to. Let's see if I can find it. 
So there is a, a group of students of Zen Master Sung San's. Um, I don't know who their, their teacher is um, uh, in Singapore. And um, and they have their chanting book up online. And their chanting book, I can't find it. I, I'll put a link. Um, in in the description of the of the uh, of the video, and then also um, uh, in, in in one of these slides. But the reason I'm talking about them is because they have all of their chants, including the Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra, spelled out in um, uh, uh, Chinese characters. But they use simplified characters, um, and so I'm I'm still in the process of of uh, translating. So here's another example of a simplified character. Okay, but anyway. This is um, uh, the Junjie uh, part of the chant that comes in at this point now. Um, and so <clears throat> the, the Junjie Bosal part of the chant. You still with me, Joe? How's, how's it going? <laughs> Do you have any questions about anything so far? I see your cat's tail there poking out. Uh -huh. No, um, I'm just following along. Okay. All, you know, a lot of information. And then the, yeah, the cat is joining us and the dog. Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh, yeah. So now, Junje Gong Dok Chui, Jok Chung Shim Seng Song, Il Che Je De Dan, Mu Nung Chim Shien, Chun San Kupin Gan, Su Bo Kyo Bo Tong, U Cha Yo I Ju, Jung Heng Mu Dung Dung, Namu Chugu Ji, Bo Mo De, Junje Bo So. This is one of two mantras in the, um, Thousand Hands and Eyes Sutra that are uh, mantras for uh, Junjie Bosal. So I could do a whole um, whole class on, or, or a whole series of classes on who is Junjie Bosal, but um, uh, right. Junjie Bosal is uh, Chundi. Bodhisattva, um, or sometimes, so Chun, if the, the Wikipedia page for Chundi is actually not too bad. Um, Chundi has lots of arms, uh, and each arm holds a different implement. Um, in, uh, in Originally in Sanskrit, uh, it was possibly Chunda or Chandi, um, and uh, one of the things that you'll find in the, oh, let's actually, I'm gonna bring back the, um, the PDF I was looking at before. Yeah, I'm gonna go look at the Kansas uh, Zen Center's chanting book again. And I'm gonna look at the back of the book. We're gonna look at the um, notes. Okay, good. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to get, um, blow it up. The old fashioned way. Ah, good. Okay, so here, um, uh, Junjie Bosal, who is also known as Chundi Bosal, also known sometimes spelled as Chunte or Junte or Chandi or Chunda, um, lots of different pronunciations. The Bodhisattva possessing magical powers. Um, now, actually, in this, uh, in a lot of versions and a lot of groups in their in their chanting books, there. Um, Footnote for uh, Junjie Bosal will say uh, the mother of all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattva of magical powers. Um, now, that's actually what this um, mantra is saying, in fact. Namu Chilgu Ji Bulmo De Junjie Bosal. And I'm going to go back into slideshow mode so I can, so I can um, play this up a little bit bigger. Uh, 
Namu is just regular old Namu, okay? Homage to, prostrate to, um, take refuge in, uh, become one with. That was um, Zen Master Sun San's favorite uh, translation of Namu. Chilgu Ji. So chill, uh, chill is seven. Gu Ji is the, um, the, the Sino-Korean pronunciation of the Sanskrit word Koti, which is a big, big number sometimes translated as a million or a hundred million or a billion or a hundred billion. Um, one of my, my favorite, my favorite translation of what Koti really means uh, is that it is a number that is not quite infinite, but that is beyond human ability to comprehend. Um, and so, which is actually, I think a nice way of putting it because it, it basically it's saying, look humans, you can't comprehend infinity. <laughs> But not only can you not comprehend infinity, you can't even comprehend this big, this number, which isn't even infinite yet, but it is still beyond anything that you're capable of understanding. And that's what a Gucci is. And so seven, and then seven of those, seven, seven Gucci's or Koti's. Um, Bulmo means Buddha mother, mother of the Buddha. Uh, and so Junjay uh, Bosal is the mother of 700 million billion buddhas uh this and this is day john j bosal great john j bosal great john j bosal homage to great john j bosal who is the mother of seven billion buddhas um and in um in miranda shaw's wonderful book um so i'll have to put a a, a link to her too in the description of the video but uh in her book on on buddhist goddesses of india uh, she points out that the first, or at least as far as she's been able to piece together, the first bodhisattva uh, who was referred to as the mother of the Buddha was um, Prajnaparamita. So Prajnaparamita, um, and this is kind of um, uh, hinted at or or implied in the um, in the Heart Sutra, but not not as not so explicitly that it's it's usually noticed. But Prasamparamita can be um, uh, uh, imagined or, or it can be a real being, uh, not just a concept or, a, or a, a part of Buddhist teaching, but is in fact a bodhisattva, Prasamparamita. And that, that uh, bodhisattva is the, uh, the, the, um, the bodhisattva, not just, you know, more so than even Manjushri, Prasamparamita is the bodhisattva of wisdom, original, pure wisdom that is the mother of all Buddhists. And so Prasamparamita was the original bodhisattva referred to as the mother of all Buddhists. But then eventually a lot of different bodhisattvas became <laughs> denoted as the mother of all Buddhists. Um, and Jinje Bosal is, is one of them. Okay. And the rest of this, again, we can go back to the... Um, uh, Let's see where we had this. All right, this part in the Thousand Hands of Eyes Sutra translation. I make the view a little smaller now. And okay. do they repent? Okay, and, and here's the, the 10 things that are being repented of that we went through. Today, I repent for killing sentient beings stealing, blah, blah, blah. Our karma that we have accumulated for millions of kalpas is banished by one thought as the dry brush that is set on fire and burned away, blah, blah, blah. Our karma has no self-nature. It arises only out of mind. If the mind disappears, our karma will also disappear. Uh, the only way to attain repentance is to let the mind and karma disappear and attain emptiness. And the only thing is, I, and I think that is kind of missing... From this translation is, uh, you know, that even the even the disappearing of mind and karma should also be seen as as empty. Um, then we have the repentance mantra, Om Sabha Mocha Moji Sadaya Sabaha, and then here is here's what comes next. If you repeat the pious acts of Junje Bo, Bosal, Junje Bodhisattva, with a clear mind, no difficulty will arise, and whether you will be reborn as Buddha in heaven or as a human being. As a Buddha in heaven or as a human being, Buddha's fortune will always be with you. I receive the great Junjay Bosal 
who is the mother of seven billion Buddhas. So I guess since it says explicitly here in the translation that she is the mother of seven billion B Buddhas, that's why the footnote only says, this is the footnote I was looking at before. It says, oh yeah, she's also the, she's also the Bodhisattva of magical powers. Okay. And then <clears throat> after that comes the, uh, how are we doing? Oh, oh, just pretty much out of time. So, um, some of these mantras I, I hope to talk about more in the next class. Um, and anything that I don't get to um, in the next two minutes and in the next class, you know, I will I will work on getting, um, you know, putting up some videos about. Because I do think it would be really good for people to have a better understanding, a more complete understanding of the, um, the Thousand Hands and Eye Sutra. There's a lot that's going on here. So here we got uh, John Bobke Jinon. Another mantra whose title is uh, longer than the mantra itself, the Jong Bupke Jinon. So Jong is um, to make it pure, uh, and Bupke is Dharma realm, which basically means the entire universe, uh, Jinon. So the mantra that purifies uh, the entire universe, um, I think. Uh, yeah, there's there's lots of different um uh and this is om nam in uh written in, in Chinese uh characters. The next one is um the mantra that protects the body. Hoshin Jinon. Om Chidim, Om Chidim, Om Chidim, the mantra that protects the mantra body. And then comes Kwan Sam Bosal Bon Shim Mimyo Yupcha Damyong Wang Jinon. Um which is the, the Korean or the Sino-Korean title of the um, famous six syllable uh, mantra of Kwasi uh, Bosa, uh, Om Mani Bang Mehom. Um, and then comes the second mantra for uh, Jinje. So this is where we'll probably have to end. The second mantra for Jinje is, um, so this is, this is a mantra that has a preamble and then the mantra itself. So Jinje Jinon Namu Samadam Motanam Namu Saman Saranam. Yeah. <laughs> Namu Saranam, Samyak Samuta, Guchi Nam Danyata, Om Jare Jure Junje Sabaha Burim. Now, um, usually, when to, to my understanding, uh, or what I've always heard and what I've always uh, uh, practiced, is that if you do, when you do this mantra multiple times, uh, this part, the part that's repeated here, um, is the part that's repeated. Now, um, that's what I've always done, and and that's how it's done in the Thousand Hands and Eye Sutra. You can also repeat this entire thing as the mantra: Namu Sadanam Samyak Samata Guchi Nam Danyata Om Jare Jure Junje Sabha Buddha. Also, another variation is that in most versions of the mantra, this Buddha is not at the end. This Buddha is a is a Sanskrit seed syllable Brum, uh, and and but in um, neither in Chinese or in Korean, do people can, can people pronounce that in a single syllable? Um, so they make it bu rim. They make it, a, but it's it's in in um, in Sanskrit. It's originally one syllable brum uh, with a syllabic r there. Um, but this is the way that it got turned into uh, that it got, got Chineseified, and then and so this is something that that some people put on the end of this mantra, and sometimes they don't is supposed to make the mantra much more powerful. And then, so since we are at the end, um, this is the, uh, oh, all right. This is the four great vows, which is how we will end the class tonight. Um, thanks for listening. For anybody who watches this recording, thank you for coming, Joe. It's great as always to um, be with you. Um, this is the uh, Sino-Korean version of the four great vows. Uh, and I'll just recite it and then I'll say the four great vows in, in English. Um Bao Sang So on Jung Seng Mubyon So on Do Bone Mujin So on Dan Bomun Muriang So on Hak Bulto So Bulto Musang So on Song. Sentient beings are numberless, we vow to save them all. Delusions are endless, we vow to cut through them all. The teachings are infinite, we vow to learn them all. The Buddha way is inconceivable, we vow to attain it. May whatever excellent qualities we have gained from this practice 
be extended for, be extended for the benefit of all beings. All right. Um, oops, I'm gonna unpin myself. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Joe. See you Been soon. Very yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still better. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on it. Getting. I'm, I'm still testing positive for COVID, but feeling oh, wow. much better. All right then. Bye.